Hi, I'm Ron Watson, pastor of First Presbyterian Church here in cloudy Ocala, Florida. There's a storm coming. Uh, I'm glad you're here to worship today, and I'd like to uh, go over some presentations you'll see uh, as soon as I finish my part of the announcements. Uh, we've got a food drive coming up on Friday, December 4th from 7.30 a.m. to 1.30 a.m. We are still asking people to put in their stewardship cards or thanking them if they already have. There is an announcement about the giving tree. And there is also an announcement that you can hear about uh, being ready for the holidays for those who are grieving. There's an announcement following that. Also, later in the broadcast, uh, I will mention Joe Simmons uh, still being in hospice, but I have gotten word since uh, I recorded that part that he did die this morning. It's Veterans Day. So uh, please keep his daughter Julie and his whole family in your prayers. Welcome to church. dog Skyler, we want to let you know we have chosen those organizations that we will bless this Christmas season. Sozo Kids Organization, Project Hope, and the Domestic Violence Center. We also want to remind you we are still collecting monetary donations and gift cards through December 8th. If you have any questions, please let us know. We look forward to working with you again this Christmas season as you have all been so generous in the past. Just a reminder, December 8th. Thanks again. Merry Christmas! Introducing Grief Share, Surviving the Holidays, a special event that helps you make it through the holiday season after the death of a loved one. Surviving the Holidays features a video that shows you how to wisely plan your holiday season. You'll also learn how to survive holiday parties, how to handle loneliness, and you'll discover how you can gradually begin enjoying the holiday season again. To learn more, talk to the Grief Share leader at your church and visit griefshare.org forward slash holidays. Thank you. 
please join me in our call to worship. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Let us worship God. Why the waters, the waters of Babylon? We sat down and wept, and wept on Zion. We sat down and wept. of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have trust in him, we dare with confidence to approach God. Let us confess our sins together in unison. Far be it from us that we should forsake you, O Lord, to serve other gods. Yet we confess our allegiance is not what it should be. You brought our ancestors out of Egypt Yet we do not always trust you to hear of our needs. You protected them all along the way that they went. Yet we wonder if you hear us when we cry to you. We hear you are a jealous God and will not forgive our transgressions or our sins. Yet we are bold to lay them before you and implore you, have mercy upon us and give us your grace. Amen. Paul delivers words of comfort when he writes, May the God of peace sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who calls you, is faithful, and in Christ we hear again the words of assurance, We are forgiven. Amen. It's me, Pastor Ron. Walk is off this week. You know what a riddle is, don't you? It's a word puzzle, a question that makes you think. Sometimes riddles are funny. I'm sure you probably heard this one. Why did the chicken cross the road? Yes, to get to the other side. Thought you knew that one. Here are a few of my other favorites. Mary's father has five children. Four are named Nene, Nini, Nainai, and Nono. What is the fifth child's name? No, not Nunu. Mary. See, it's her sisters. Anyway, how many months have 28 days? That's right, all of them. Some may have 30 or 31, but they all have 28. What is full of holes but can still hold water? A sponge. Riddles have been around since the time of Jesus. Maybe longer than that. Probably. One day, Jesus was approached by a group of Sadducees, religious leaders who did not believe in the resurrection or the happiness of heaven. 
the Sadducees were trying to trick Jesus into agreeing that there was no resurrection. And so they asked him to answer this riddle, and I'll tell it to you. They said, the law of Moses says that if a man dies, leaving a wife but no children, his brother should marry the widow and have a child who will carry on the brother's name. Well, suppose there were seven brothers. The oldest one married and then died without children. So the second brother married the widow, but he also died. Then the third brother married her, and this continued until all seven brothers had married the same woman. Finally, the woman who also Finally, the woman also died. So tell us, whose wife will she be after the resurrection, since all seven were married to her? My, that is a tricky riddle, isn't it? Listen to Jesus' answer. Jesus said, marriage is for people here on earth. But in the age to come, those who are raised from the dead will not marry or be married. Not only that, but they will never die again. They will live forever as the children of God. After Jesus answered their riddle so wisely, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Now you and I know that Jesus promised us that if we love him and trust in him, we will live forever in heaven with him. Isn't it sad that some people do not believe there is a resurrection and eternal life in heaven? Oh, that reminds me of one more riddle. Why were the people in today's Bible lesson called Sadducees? They didn't believe in their resurrection or the happiness of heaven. They were sad, you see. Let's pray. Dear Father, we're happy that today you have promised us of a great life here and a wonderful life everlasting. Thank you for the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen. See you next time. That you were coming, coming for me soon Oh my God, I'll be ready for you I want to run on greener pastures I want to dance on higher hills I want to drink from sweeter waters In the misty morning chill And my soul is getting restless for the place where I belong I can't wait to join the angels and sing my heaven song I hear your voice and I catch my breath well done, my child, enter in and rest. Tears of joy run down my cheek. It's beautiful beyond my wildest dreams. I want to run on greener pastures. I want to dance on higher hills. I want to drink from sweeter waters in the morning chill and my soul is getting restless for the place where I belong I can't wait to join the angels and sing my heaven song my heaven song I want to give an update. Uh, we have people in our church who still need your prayers. They are the same uh, that you know from last week, probably. I don't have anything new to share 
at broadcast time. Bill Bowen should be coming home. We have not heard from him yet, but expect to later in the week. There are others you may know of who have had procedures done, and I would like for you to be praying for them as we join together here for prayer. Let us pray. God of infinite mercy, we offer thanksgiving for your goodness. You have not forsaken your people. When our tables are laden, it is due to your grace. Our lungs are filled with the life you breathe into us. Our limbs move with purpose because of the strength you impart. When anxieties engulf us, you hide not your compassion. If we are afflicted with pain, you comfort us with your presence. We give thanks for Christ Jesus, who fulfills all that you promised. In him we have confidence that you accept who we are. It is he who redeems us in spite of our rebellion and offers salvation when we stray from your will. He tempers your judgment with his intercession and stays your anger as he acts on our behalf. We can approach you with assurance that in Christ you will hear us, and we take heart that we still dwell in your favor. We give thanks for our loved ones who are at rest now with you. Their faith in Christ Jesus helped transform our lives. We thank you as well as prophets and saints of all ages. Their journeys taken in obedience have inspired us to pilgrimage. We thank you for all those who have shown us how to seek justice and kindness. By their example, our lives have perspective, and because of their commitment, we too have had faith. As we continue our own quest to be obedient, help us to remember your presence throughout history. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank you once again for your great generosity to the church and for your pledges. Uh, if you want to give to the church, you know there's three ways you can do it. You can drop it off at the mail slot at the office, or you can uh, mail in your donations, or you can click online. Just go to fbcocala.org and click on Give. Let us pray. Eternally gracious God, we know that all we have is a gift from you. We have worked hard and worked for your glory, but the things that we say we have done, you have done for us. Help us to remember your goodness towards us as we share and be good stewards of what you have given. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hear the word of God as it is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How deep the 
father's love for us how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is. in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but i will boast in jesus christ his death and resurrection why should His wounds have paid my ransom. The song that I sang earlier in the broadcast, By the Waters of Babylon, is a slave song, a lament lament straight out of the Psalms. It was written as the people of Judah were captured and taken back to Babylon, what is now Iraq, as a slave population. It is to be noted that this capture was different than that accomplished by the Assyrians over the ten lost tribes of Israel of the north some hundred plus years prior to this event. The, Assyri the Assyrians scattered the entire population of the ten northern tribes of Israel. The Babylonian captivity was different. Only imported people were captured and taken to Babylon. Many poor Jews were left behind in Judea, ignored by the conquerors. The Babylonian captivity is remarkable compared to the Egyptian one in this manner as well. All of God's people were enslaved in Egypt where again here in Babylon, just the officials, the priests, power brokers, the artists, the prophets, the poets, all in chains. And then in this backdrop, the captured Jews are asked to perform for their captors. Sing us a song about Zion, they said. Such songs, songs of ascent, had deep special meaning for the Jewish people then, as they do today. Zion, the holy hill of Jerusalem, is sung about as the dwelling place of the Almighty. How can we sing a song like that here in captivity? And this complaint, of course, becomes its very own song, a song of lament. This psalm would give way to slave songs for all persecuted believers. 
You may know well the Bob Marley version of the psalm passage, which wasn't performed today, but I wanted to do it, maybe sometime in the future. I am leaning heavily into the idea of capture, because talk of another life through the years has lifted those who were depressed about their current circumstances. Even with a pandemic and an uncertain near future of our democracy, I am not comparing our current travails to slavery or war. Yet it is in times like this when it is indeed good for people of faith to talk about their future so that we may in turn embrace and live fully in our present. And so what? Many of you have heard or maybe participated in a conversation that went something like this. How are you doing? Well, and then that person answering produces a long list of ailments and other complaints, but then finishes the sentence with these words, but it beats the alternative. Now, if this is your favorite expression, I'm not asking you to stop saying it if it brings you joy. I am, however, here to say that as a pastor, nothing beats the alternative. Because the alternative is eternity with the Lord. Jesus himself is taken to task by the Sadducees, whose story we heard in the children's sermon. They didn't believe in the afterlife and tried to riddle Jesus into seeing its absurdity. And we get their point. Heaven is full of question marks and seeming paradoxes for us, such as who are you married to in heaven if you've been married more than once on earth? The answer of Jesus may dash the hopes of the young and romantic, but it reveals to us just how far removed heaven is from our current situation. As Presbyterians, we put much focus on the here and now and to justice and righteousness. Such a worldview is one that Christ encouraged in the two great commandments, to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. This world matters. As believers, we are not merely working towards some heaven end game where the now is inconsequential, hardly. And yet we sometimes get derailed by the present. And between the pandemic and our election process for a new national leader, we've had much to get us derailed. Even if we are buoyed by the news of the Pfizer vaccine, and I am. It is literally the best news of the year by far. But sometimes, a picture of paradise can move us through the rough waters, knowing that the seas will be calm and we will be still and at peace. So how do we get there from here? We have to get through the roadblocks of life. <laughs> My mixed metaphor for the day. What are the heavenly roadblocks? We are forced by our human condition to see the eternal through the lens of the finite. How on earth do we speak of heaven when we can see it only through that which we know? I remember the first time I saw an opulent buffet in my childhood. It was filled not only with all kinds of savory goodness, exotic meats and cheeses, but also it had an ice sculpture, bigger than I was, a great swan. That and the Napoleons served with a heavy chocolate sauce at the end of a line convinced me that this was what heaven would be like. I was 11, so cut me a break. But now at 58, still in the latter stages, please Lord, of the pandemic, the last thing that could seem heavenly to me now is any kind of a buffet, even with an industrial sneeze guard. Please, chef, segregate my food in the kitchen from everything and everyone as quickly as possible. We're forever trying to think outside of the box of the world we know to the heaven that we want to know. But for now, we may only use the box itself to determine what is outside of it. With only terms we know, which are earthly, not heavenly. We are separated from many people we love 
and worry that our reunion in heaven will not happen or will be incomplete? In other words, will we be disappointed as to who is in heaven and who is not? The Apostle Paul was addressing this fear uh, with the Thessalonians. Mixed up in all of this was the early New Testament misinterpretation of the return of Jesus. His words were misunderstood by the early church that Jesus would return before any of the believers died. As funerals continued to happen then, just as they do today, the early believers began to wonder what had happened to their loved ones in lieu of the promise of eternal life, the resurrection of Jesus, and how everything would exactly be restored. Again, what will heaven be like and who will be there? Paul tells them, we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Paul's words are meant to serve as a comfort that yes, even though some have died, Jesus will indeed bring us all back together. Jesus shares not only his death to take on our sin upon him, but he also shares his resurrection that we may have eternal life together. And what will the waiting be like? I miss a lot of people in my life. And the older I get, the more people I miss. Perhaps the most difficult thought of heaven is the thought itself instead of the reality of it. We can only know heaven in thought, in mindset, and in holy promise. As we yearn to be reunited with those people who have gone before us, we are confronted with the gloom of present circumstances of separation, of trouble, of the unholy. Waiting on heaven to be our reality is difficult, and yet the hope of heaven sees us through our time of lament. Go back to that psalm of lament by the captives in Babylon. They wanted to be restored to Zion, to be returned to their home with their God. Their captivity would last 70 years. So there were children who were taken away, presumably, grew up in Babylon and restored in their old age to Jerusalem, to a new temple as well built due to the generosity of Cyrus the Persian. Yes, that's Iran. <laughs> Cyrus wasn't a believer in God, but God's instrument. Some of the captives stayed. They learned to like living by the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. They made money. They kept the faith without going to temple. They helped pay for others to go back to Jerusalem, but they themselves had become locals. After 70 years of being in Babylon after being born there. Still, others lost the faith. Shall we fall into despair while we are waiting for better times? Jules and I have been watching Downton Abbey and uh, are just about halfway through, so please don't give me any spoilers if you see me. But watching the characters persevere through World War I and then the Spanish flu epidemic reminded me of just how good we have it now, even in a year as strange as 2020 has been. Our faith can get us through the heavenly roadblocks. We can read about heaven in scripture, in literature, in fantasy, but we will always be limited until we get there. We can also worry about who gets there and lament the separation we have from loved ones. We can struggle with the weight, but even then, we are going to get there. Not at the same time, but we will share the same eternity with the saints before us. This world can bring us down, I know, but we must not lose hope, especially with a vaccine now within our grasp, as well as therapeutics. And no matter what you're going through right now, let me assure you, it doesn't beat the alternative. Heaven will be wonderful.
Right now, heaven can wait. Let's persevere in the faith, knowing that God is with us now and forever. Amen. Would you please join me in affirming our faith? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now may the peace of God be in your heart, the grace of God be in your words, the love of God be in your hands, and the joy of God be in your soul, and in the song your life sings. Amen. Go in peace.